My name is Carol Robles. I'm the current president of the Philippine Nurses Association of Metropolitan DC. I'm also the communications and marketing chair of the Philippine Nurses Association of America. When our group arrived in Washington DC in 1991, our amazing artists at work pick us up from the airport. PNAMDC gave us a television, a rice cooker, a bag of uncooked rice, and they made sure that we were not homesick. They took us to the groceries, malls, tourist attractions, and they became part of our families. We found support from our fellow Filipino nurses and PNAMDC who provided us with the resources, mentorship, and a sense of community. Who would have guessed that exactly three decades later, I would become the president of the association. Serving as president of PNA MDC presented an opportunity for me to champion the needs and aspirations of Filipino and Filipino-American nurses advocate for their rights, and contribute to the betterment of the nursing profession as a whole. The first donation that was given by the Philippine Nurses Association of Metropolitan DC was in 2021. They gave 23 jetpatic hand pumps to the ITAS of San Pablo, Castillejo, Zambales. In the following year, they again donated portable solar lights, and they gave funds for the training of ITAS in cookery, adult literacy, health emergencies. This year, on January 30, we turned over the project of PNA MDC to the ITAS, and this is the biggest project, a health hub and 10 toilets and baths. Without the PNA MDC until now, the ITAS will not have toilets and baths. They will not have a health hub where their medical needs are addressed and they will not have water and light that do not require monthly bills. Carol asked me, is there any need uh, in the area of um, education? So initially I said, you know, the ITAS, they think that education um, is not for them because it's a waste of time to be sitting in the classroom. They would rather bring all their children to the mountains to gather their fruits that they can sell. However, I noticed that the adults are interested in education. And many of them start the program ALS, but do not finish. Why? Because the ALS classrooms are conducted under the, under the mango trees uh, with bamboo, bamboo seats and table and there are no books. Nothing really. There's no blackboard and there's a teacher who is not licensed. We had a MOA signing and a groundbreaking of the ALS, ALS, ALS classroom in uh, Sambales. The ITAS do not have classroom where they can uh, have their ALS studies and so uh, a part of the barangay hall is dedicated to this project of the PNA MDC, a one classroom building for ALS where both the ITAS and the non-ITAS can use for the program. Ultimately, the PNA MDC has raised the human dignity of the ITAS because their needs have been neglected for many, many years. Our biggest challenge that Polangenos are facing, especially the school children, is uh, food insecurity. I'm very grateful to PNA MDC under the leadership of Carol that I was given this opportunity to reach out to these you know, school children and to do the feeding program. And in behalf of Polangenos, I'm very thankful that we're doing this type of project. We do health screening of blood pressure, the blood glucose, and we also do health teachings with regards to nutrition, hand washing, and of course, we were big on the vaccines.
PNA MDC received its first generous grant and the project was named Heal the Healers. Um, under this project, we conducted a peer-to-peer -peer support group, a dance to wellness event, and a wellness activity called STEPS, where participants competed with other participants by counting their steps. And then um, we conducted five webinars with topics on well-being and self-care techniques, all to help healthcare workers cope with the stress experienced during the pandemic. This second um, grant was geared towards building healthy communities in Montgomery County. The project was called Bridging the Gap Towards a Healthy Community. So the Bridging the Gap Towards a Healthy Community project consisted of six program services. Uh, namely, number one is the free access to medical care, also known as free clinic. Uh, the second service was the senior support group. The third program service was the caregivers training. The fourth uh, program service is the Healthy Asian Food and Health Fest. The last two program services are the two webinars. Um, you know, it always feels good to give back. Um, this country has given us so many opportunities and now that we were given the opportunity to serve, the experience is indeed priceless. Engaging in PNA MDC's activities and advocacies has had a huge impact on its members. Not only has the organization seen a 200% increase in membership in the past two years, but the positive influence of these activities is undeniable. By participating in events, members have gained valuable skills, knowledge, and experiences that have boosted their professional development. To Carol and her officers, you guys have really made a big impact. Not only is Carol a, um, I would say, a walk the talk leader, but um, she was such a trusting leader. Um, she allows her officers to shine in their own way. Um, so to Carol, my message is, I know we always joke that today is her Independence Day. Um, I think that today is just the beginning to greater heights. My final message is from the Vatican. I quote, the ability to stretch forth our hand shows that we possess an innate capacity to act in ways that give meaning to life. Carol, as a leader, stretch her hand to people who are not known to her, people whose needs have been neglected for decades. That is the greatest gift a person and a leader can share with humanity. To the 2023-2025 Board of Directors led by Dr. Christine Paco, I want to express my utmost confidence in your ability to steer the organization towards even greater success. As the leaders of PNA MDC, you have the opportunity to positively impact the lives of many individuals. I have no doubt that under your watch, PNA MDC will flourish and continue to make a significant difference in the lives of its members the communities it serves. Measuring the success of my leadership goes beyond just the number of awards received. While awards can be a good indication of recognition, what truly matters is the support and satisfaction of the officers, members, and donors. Their willingness to support and contribute to the organization's goals and initiatives are the successes that I am most proud of.